Well, praise the Lord and God bless you. Welcome to Winning in Prayer. I'm Apostle Terrence J. Holman, and I'll be spending a few moments with you, and I hope that you are ready to be encouraged. I hope you are ready to be strengthened. Why? Because the joy of the Lord is our strength, and he enables us to continue on and on, even those times where we get weary. Amen. So let's pray. And then let us go into the word of God. Father, we thank you. Kind Father, we give you glory and honor and praise. Father, we thank you that you've allowed us to gather together one more time. Father, we thank you that you've given us your word to help guide us and keep us in these perilous times. Father, we thank you for your love and your tender mercies. Now, Father, wash us clean in Jesus' name that you may use us for your glory. Father, anoint the hearer of the word and the doer of the word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen and amen. Well, beloved, I hope you got your Bibles. Let us go quickly. We're going to go to the book of Revelations, chapter number three, verse number two. I'm so excited to share with you because it is our job to strengthen those who may need it. It is our job to encourage. You know what I'm saying? A lot of times we don't feel that things are going well and we would just like to hear a kind word. And it's almost difficult now to find somebody who's not going through at the same time you're going through to get a word. But how many know God's always got a ram in the bush? God's always got a way that he can get the word to us, things that we need, and he gives us strength in the time of need. He gives us answers when we need them. And so here we find in Revelations chapter number three and verse two, the word of God declares, be watchful and strengthen the things which remain that are ready to die. For I have not found thy works perfect before God. Now, if someone reads that, they will automatically presume, well, then it's no point in going on because what I have is getting ready to die. And God has not found my works perfect. But right here in that verse alone, he tells us what to do to make sure that our works are found perfect. He tells us to be watchful. That means that we've got to pay attention to those things that have come to distract us. There are a lot of things that happen during the day, during the night, that, that will come and distract us. We can have our focus set when we set our minds on things above. When we begin to put God first and we let him give us the instruction on how to command our day, we can find our day being a whole lot better and a whole lot smoother when we allow God to be in control of it. Father, how would you like me to spend this day? Some people think that it is not important, but the Bible says to acknowledge him in all your ways and he shall direct your path. And so we've got to be watchful while we're doing things for God. Why? Because we have an adversary who's always trying to undo the good that we do. Hallelujah. And so if we are watching and we are prayerful, God will show us those things that are coming to hinder us so we'll know how to lay them aside, all those weight and sins that so easily beset us. It is easy to get our eyes off the target. It is easy to get distracted because we may have a pain here and an ailment there or a child disobedient here, one acting up over there. There are so many things that can come up that can distract us from our focus. And that focus is pleasing God, but we've got to lay hold to our salvation and be strong in the Lord and in the power of his might. The word of God tells us to strengthen those things which remain. It is so good that we're not having to find a new building block or a foundation. All he said was, I need you to strengthen those things which remain because they look like they're about to die. They look like they're on life support, and it looks like somebody is going to unplug you quick, quite soon. So you want to strengthen that which you have left. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 26 and verse 41, watch and pray that ye enter not into temptation. The spirit is indeed willing, but the flesh is weak. Listen, 
There are times where we have our minds made up and then things will come and they will tempt us. They will tempt us to react negatively. They'll tempt us to respond inappropriately. We can be having a good day and there's somebody coming full of the devil always want to come and say something rude and nasty and all of a sudden sometimes it takes you by surprise. And then before you know it, if you're not prayed up now, you'll be to release something that does not need to be released. And so he says, I need you to watch and I need you to pray that you don't enter into temptation. You're going to be tempted not to pray. You're going to be tempted not to follow through. Even though your spirit is willing, your flesh is weak. And so we need to strengthen that spirit. We have to strengthen the spirit of God that remains in us so that way we are over it, be able to overcome the wicked one. There are times, sometimes you haven't read as much as you needed to. You haven't prayed as much as you needed to. But then God will remind us of what he has already done. And it is those victories that God will remind us and we'll become ready to go thank him again and believe again. He says, strengthen those things that remain. If you've ever been touched by God, there is a personal touch that has come and can't nobody remove it. It is permanent. When he does something in your life, it is so permanent. When he fills you up with the precious gift of the Holy Ghost, it is a permanent thing. The only way you can reject it and lose it is because you reject it. It's because you don't want to be kept. But when you got a mind to be kept and you got a desire to be kept, you're not going to let anything separate you from the love of the Father that he's willingly given you. He says, listen, I don't want you to let these good things die. You've got scripture in your belly. You've got prayer in your belly. You've got hope in your belly. You've got joy in your belly. And he don't want you to let those things die. Why? Because of a certain attack that just came to distract you. An attack that came to bother you down. You've got to think on good things, beloved. Things, whatsoever things are lovely. Whatsoever things are just. Whatsoever things are pure. If there be any virtue. If there be any praise. He said, think on these things. So when you get a thought that makes you want to be angry and upset, you got to begin to think on the things that God has already done. Why? Because Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. And so if he did it before, he will do it again. Now when it comes to standing on the word of God in your life, you've got to make sure and make sure that you are determined that you're going to stand even if you have to do it by yourself. There are times but you're going to want a prayer partner and you're going to want somebody to touch and agree with you. But you might not find that person. You might not be able to get in contact with somebody right then and there while you are going through. Will you backslide just because you couldn't find nobody to agree with you when you couldn't find nobody to pray with you? The word of God declares that David encouraged himself. You mean to tell me God ain't been good enough that we can't encourage ourselves no matter how bad we feel, no matter matter how tired we feel, we should be able to encourage ourselves because of the victories that God has already won in our life. Just because he saved us, that is a mighty victory. We were already on our way to a devil's hell and he stretched out his hand of mercy and he decided to draw us. The word of God declares that we can't come except he draw us. And somebody ought to count it an honor and a privilege that God extended the love line and drew us. He extended mercy and drew us. He extended grace and drew us. So we've got to have that determination and we've got to have a mind that says no matter what happens, I'm not letting go of God. No matter what comes, I'm not letting go of God. No matter what is said, I'm not going to give up on my God. Why? Because I know that he is able to keep his word. He is able. He's done it before and he will do it again. And so you have to be determined in your mind. Even if your spouse decide, well, I don't want to believe God because we've been waiting for so long and you've been praying and God ain't done nothing. It don't look like God is pleased with us. It don't look like God is going to give us no answer. And so that one spouse might decide, well, I ain't praying no more. Well, let me tell you something, beloved. You still got to hold on because the word of God tells us that we've got to work out our own soul salvation. 
I thank God that my salvation is not predicated on whether you pray for me or not. Oh, but it's predicated on whether I stay connected. And can I tell you, in this hour, you're going to have to stay connected. Because in this hour, your eyes are going to lie to you. Let me tell you, what you hear is going to lie to you. They're going to tell you, no, they're going to tell you, you're not qualified. They're going to tell you, you are rejected. They're going to tell you, you won't be accepted. They're going to tell you, you're not the one to come. They're going to tell you, you're not anointed enough. They're going to tell you, you don't talk good enough. They're going to tell you, you ain't tall enough. They're going to tell you, you ain't small enough. But can I tell you something? When God gives you his word, that is the qualifying factor right there. Why? Because heaven has already declared it. And what is in heaven shall be done in the earth. Hallelujah. So it doesn't matter what's going on. you got to make up in your mind. If I have to go by myself, I'm going to go. If mama don't go, I will go. If father, sister, brother don't go, I will go. I've got to go. Why? Because the father is asking now, who can I send? Who will stand up and speak for me? Who don't need a million dollars before they say, yes, Lord? Who doesn't need five cards until they say, yes, Lord? I want to find somebody that will be a voice crying out in the wilderness to decree and declare that Jesus is coming soon. I'm so glad to know that the one that died is the one that rose. And I'm so glad that he has all power in his hand. I'm so glad that I'm connected to that power and that authority. And when you make up your mind, sometimes you got to lay hands on yourself and say, God, renew my mind because you have to have a mind to go on. God ain't taking no hostages. You got to come willingly. And if you say yes, Lord, willingly, understand God's going to come to collect on that yes. A lot of times we get in service and the service we going good and they tell you to say yes, Lord. And you find yourself saying, yes, Lord. You say yes to your will. And you say yes to your way. But you don't really know what you're saying yes to. But you're just saying yes, Lord. And when he comes to collect on that yes, that yes is often collected through a trial or a tribulation that says no matter what comes, I'm going to trust you. All my appointed days, Job said, will I wait? Until my change come, I can't rush God. I can't hurry God. I can't charge God foolish. I've got to wait and see what the end going to be. Hallelujah. we got to run on and see what it's going to be. But we sure have got to have a mind to hold on. we got to have a mind that's going to help us to keep going. What does the Bible say? If my mother and my father forsake me, then the Lord will take me up. Thank God he didn't leave me all by myself. Thank God he didn't leave this all to me to do myself. Thank God that he that has begun a good work in me is able to not only perform it, but to keep it until the day of Jesus Christ. I thank God it doesn't rely on me to keep myself. Lord, help me. I wish somebody could put that in the comments. I ain't keeping myself. God is keeping me. God is keeping me. I wish I had about five people. I would tell them, lean over on your neighbor and say, God is keeping me. All the things that we have seen from the sun rising to the sun setting, we've seen some ups and we've seen some downs, but God is still managing to keep us. When our mind says, I don't want to operate in you no more, and it feels like we're about to lose it, God still allows us to keep going on and on. And sometimes we wonder when we look at our lives, I wonder how I made it over. My soul don't understand how. But all I can tell you is that when God is keeping you, through the rain, through the storm, God is keeping you. When your anchor is in Jesus, listen here, when your anchor is Jesus, the billows may roll, the breakers may dash. It doesn't matter. God is keeping me steadfast. He's calling us to be steadfast unmovable and always abounding in the work of the Lord. I tell you, if you've ever said yes to the Lord, I'm going to tell you what that means. It means that you're saying, God, I give you a promise that I'm going to make this journey somehow. May not have the road met, may not have gotten all the twists and the turns, but God, because I gave you a yes, I'm going to make it somehow. No, I'm not responsible for cleaning me up. That's your job. I just said yes, and I'm saying, God, if you're going to watch me, then give me the supermax. God, clean out them hidden parts that I don't want to talk about. God, do the work that it takes in order to send me. And if you send me, I'll go. God, if you anoint me, I'll go. 
God, if you release me, I will go. And we've got to have our minds made up in this hour because if we are not sure, then that means that we can be swayed. And if we can be swayed, we are like water. And the word of God declares that a double-minded man is unstable in all his ways. We can't be sanctified and saved today and ready to turn our back on God tomorrow because it seemed like he took too long. We can't do that to our great God. Why? Because it is he that has made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. So our responsibility is to enter into his gates with thanksgiving and enter into his courts with praise. Why? Because we've got to be thankful to him and bless his name. When it's good, I bless you, God. When I don't understand it, you still got to lift your hands and say, Father, I bless you. You've got to be able to give him glory and honor. Why? Because there is no temptation that has come to you that God is not able to bring you up and out. First of all, let me make something very clear. When you are tempted, you can only be tempted by something you already like. All God is trying to get you to see is you got some things that ain't like me. Because what you like don't agree with my word. So, so when the temptation comes, there's an old song that used to say, yield not to temptation, for yielding is sin. Listen, it's not the, 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 the temptation ain't the sin, but when you give in, that's, that, 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 that's the thing. And that, that, that's what God gives us power. He said that those things are going to come. They're going to try to upset you. They're going to try to hold you back. Man, they might even try to remind you how you in the temptation used to be friends. Y'all ain't going to let me talk. There are times when, when, when our past will come right up in our face. And that devil want to know, did you really mean yes or did you really mean it? And that thing will come right up at you and you're going to say, Lord... I should not be tempted. So this is what I need you to do. I need you to wash me clean. I need to consecrate myself because this is an area now that I realize I have not surrendered all over to you. And there are some times when these trials and tribulations come, it is not so much just to make you feel bad. No, you got to know what you need to pray for. If everything is going good, what you going to God for? You ain't got nothing to say, but thank you. But when you find out that there are some things and some areas that God is trying to stretch you out in so he can grow in you, then you'll realize that the growth is just some growing pain. Sometimes when you're getting a little taller, your bones start to ache a little bit. When the Holy Ghost is trying to stretch out in you, sometimes it moves a lot of things out the way. And sometimes it might not feel good. But I hear the word of God tell me in the book of James to count it all joy. When you fall into direst of temptation, he said count it all joy. You don't hear what I'm saying. There are some things that we don't overcome because we're not ready. But the Bible said count it all joy. Why? Because he that called you, he's going to be the one that's going to deliver you. You've got to be able to have faith and believe that God is able to keep you and to bring you through. You understand that we're not just saved just to be saved and we're not out here empty operating on, on the fact that I'm saved. Well, it's good to be saved, but if you don't have any keeping power, you don't have anything that can sustain you, if you don't have anything that can direct you, you don't have someone to give you strength of, of, of how to handle. Come on here. You need the wisdom of God. Let me tell you, it's all wrapped up in the Holy Ghost. The Bible says in Luke chapter number 10 and verse 19, he said, Behold, I give you power. Power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over all the power of the enemy. And nothing shall by any means hurt you. And we've got to understand a lot of times when we feel hurt, it is because that part of us is not covered. Because the word of God says that it shall not hurt you. That thing means they got to get out of you if it's hurting you. Because if it's not in God, then that means it's not covered. And we need those things to be covered. Sometimes people can say things to us and they can be so hurtful and harmful. And we try to figure out what in the world did I do to you to make you treat me like that. But then there are some things that God's got to work out of us. You know, a lot of people don't want to think that they cry. Come on. They don't want to think that they arrogant. No, I, I, I love everybody until you don't. You don't understand. You, you, you got to understand 
what you dealing with here because the biggest person you got to deal with usually is you. I wish I had a truth teller in here today that can say amen because a lot of times God is trying to work out some stuff in us. The only way you want to strengthen that which remains is that you identify what's weak. Come on. If you won't know what's weak in your life, how you going to make it strong? You're not getting strong by looking at the gym. Come on here. You got to go on the inside. I wish I had somebody because somebody's looking at the church trying to figure out how come I ain't getting strong. But until you go in, I wish I had somebody that can say we got to go in. And when you go in, you can get some help. You can get some strength. You can get some teaching. You can get some understanding. A lot of times, we're going through because we got a bad understanding. And we don't want to admit to nobody, no, I, I think I know it. Well, if you think you know it all, that's the problem right there. God is trying to under, help you understand that without me, you nothing. A lot of people think their credentials did it. Well, I'm degreed. Well, congratulations. But that don't come by the Holy Ghost. You understand? You, you can be full of the Holy Ghost and don't even know how to read or write. I wish I had somebody here. Because I tell you, that's what God did with our forefathers. I wish somebody knew who Jesus was. Peter was a fisherman by trade. Who taught him how to read and write? He wasn't a learned man, but full of the Holy Ghost. I wish I had somebody that wasn't looking at what they were lacking and just accepted what they already had. I thank God that the greater I have is more than what I'm looking at. Somebody is looking over there thinking the green is grass, the grass is greener because they done went to this school and they done went to that seminary and they done went to that. Listen, let me tell you something. When you start going through God's school and you complete those courses, those are strengthening you and you'll be more knowledgeable than those that have sat in classrooms trying to get some paper that they don't understand. Why? Because they're getting fed from a teacher who may or may not have gone through what they're talking about. But when you got the Holy Ghost, the Bible says that he is a teacher and that he will teach you in the same hour. Come on, Luke 12, 12, which you ought to say. And so we've got to be able to rely on and use the power that he's given us. We have to use the power of the completed work of the cross. We, come on, we're not using no power that ain't no source. Now, he don't need no generator. He is power. And we've got to be determined on the inside until it affects on the outside, how we operate. And we've got to be determined that I'm not going to let my mind go. I'm not going to let my gifts go sour. I'm not going to renege on God because somebody treated me bad. I'm not going to turn my back on God because somebody in the church hurt my feelings. Oh, I wish I had somebody that said, you know what, Father, even though I was injured, the Bible says it was good. Oh, God. He said it was good that I was afflicted. Man, I, I wouldn't have even known God the way I did until I got afflicted. I wouldn't even know how to trust God because it was the ones that was walking with me in the house of God. Them the ones that was tripping me up because they didn't want to see me get nowhere. But I thank God for the trial and the tribulation because I counted it all joy. He allowed me to come through on top. And now the devil wants you to have a pity party because now you try to figure out well, where I'm going to go, what I'm going to do. God done laid that whole plan out. But let God strengthen you. A lot of you right now are dealing with stuff because you know what well, the Lord done called me. But you know, people don't believe in, 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 in women preachers and people don't believe that, 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 that I can do it. Listen, the first lesson God trying to teach you now is how to handle rejection. Because if you can't handle being rejected and being despised, you can't carry this gospel. Let me tell you, if they don't accept you, shake the dust from your feet and you go where God tells you to go. You ain't got to wait on somebody to say, yeah, 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 you the one. Let me tell you, if they sit by God, they're going to know you the one. If you call by God, somebody else going to know it because that spirit is going to identify. Why do I say that? The word of God declares that the Holy Ghost will testify of himself. Listen, he don't need no flesh and blood. Talk about I'm in there. He said, when I see you, I'm going to make sure you know that I know that you're with me. Come on. How do I prove that? Well, the Bible says that when Mary came to visit Elizabeth, she gave greetings. But as she gave greetings, Elizabeth said, oh, something happened. My, 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 my baby leaped in my belly as soon as I heard your salutations. Because something in you agreed with something in me. Come on. They hadn't even laid hands on each other. But what was in them began to testify that it was already there. And then after they began to talk, she said, oh, you a blessed woman. You a blessed woman. And she said, well, you 
are to why because we are carrying the work of God and you've got to understand that whatever you're carrying that God gave you is his work and it's his job to perform it it's his job to keep it it's his job to take care of it but it is your job to submit come on it's your job to say yes, Lord. It is your job to get in the word of God. It is your job to get in prayer time. Come on. You can't leave it all on the preacher. Come on. You have to believe that he will teach you. Come on. The Holy Ghost will teach you how to study. He will teach you how to pray. He will teach you how to love. Come on. He will teach you how to forgive. Oh, come on, Father. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. And you've got to have that kind of spirit on the inside of you that says, even though I'm despised and rejected, I'm in good company. Oh, Lord, I wish you would tell your neighbor I'm in good company. Even if you buy yourself, just tap yourself, slap yourself a high five and say, I'm in good company. Come on, I'm in good company. Why? Because our Jesus was despised and rejected. What better example do we have than Jesus Christ. He is the epitome of what it means to be submitted. Submitted to a father when the father don't tell you everything. Submitted when a father allows you to go through trial and tribulation. But then that father being the good father that he is, before you can eliminate and be kicked out of the trial, he says, I need you to strengthen that which remains. Which means that we got something in us that ought to help us keep going. Let me tell you something. When your mind is made up, and that's one of the things that you've got to strengthen is your mind. You've got to strengthen your mind. Let me tell you, when your mind is made up for God, the devil can't lie you out. Come on now. You know they coming and talk about you, but he can't lie you out because your mind is made up. He can't scandal you out. No, 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 because your mind is made up. Guess what? He can't buy you out either. Oh, y'all don't hear me. People are going to try to buy you and say, hey, uh, you can come over here. You can preach like this, and, and, and but you can't do this. Listen, you can't buy me out because I have been bought for the price. You can't trick me out. You can't force me out. You can't push me out. You can't pull me out. Why? Because God has chosen me to do a work. And I'm talking about when you got a mind to go on. I tell you, it's something to have a mind to go on with God. I made up my mind that I'm going, and I'm going all the way. Listen, I don't care who don't go. You don't want to go, that's on you. But I got a mind to go on. And when you got a mind to go on, Father will strengthen you. Listen here. There is an increase of wickedness in our world. People think that it's cool to be demonic and to be lustful in temptation. You got these young people out here, oh, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm on demon time. Listen, don't you talk like that. Honey, like we don't play with demons. We cast them out. And you see how the devil come in to make you use his language? Come on. It, 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 the, what Peter said, this is an untoward generation. This is a generation that don't want nothing. They, they, they want to let the enemy run rush out through their mind. But we've got to be wise enough to say, ah, don't say that. You call them for something that you don't understand. Honey, we don't play with demons. We don't, we don't, we don't, we don't do that. Not over here. We don't counsel them. We don't talk to them. We don't play with them. We cast them out. I said we cast them out. You don't play with no devil. We don't do that. The Bible says in Matthew chapter number 24 and verse 37 through 39. But as the days of Noah were so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. For as in the days that were before the flood, they were eating and drinking, marrying and giving in marriage until the day that Noah entered the ark and knew not until the flood came and took them away, so shall also the coming of the Son of Man be. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying? Because God said it's going to be the same way as in the days of Noah. And if we can't see that, we have people getting ready to be married, giving and giving away in marriage, and they're eating and drinking and partying like nothing is going on, and the word of God is going forth, going forth on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday, and Sunday, but people seem to be disinterested. They say, well, I don't have time for that, but as long as there's a party going on, come on, they're ready to go there, and they're going to act like they have not heard. But he said, I'm coming, and I'm coming again, and it's going to be just like that. When people think they got enough time, they can do whatever they want to do. Come on, time is short, and we don't have the time that we think we have. 
And so we've got to make our minds up to go with God all the way. We have to realize that it is God that has blessed us. It is God that has given us a mind. If you got a dollar at all, you ought to tell God thank you. Because it is God that gives us the power to get wealth. Oh, well, preacher, I ain't wealthy. Well, you're not wealthy because you ain't declaring and declaring it. you got to speak it out of your mouth. I shall be wealthy because the wealth of the wicked is laid up for the just. I wish somebody knew that God would send it to you if you knew what to do with it. I'm telling you, when you are yielded before God, God begins to make ways out of no way. He is that kind of God. But we're living in a time where the world is trying to tell the saints how to behave. The world is trying to tell the saints you ain't got to do all that. The world is trying to tell the saints you don't have to be sanctified. But the word of God declares that he said you are to make an understanding and a distinction between clean and unclean. You are to draw a line between holy and unholy. And I thank God that he didn't leave it to the preacher only, but he said, I'm telling you to make a difference. For you to make a line of demarcation that this is something that I will not do. This is somewhere I will not go. Since when did we take our instructions for the heathen? Doesn't the Bible say learn not the way of the heathen? I wish I had somebody that knew the word of God that says seek ye the old path and stand there in it. I'm not trying to find no new way. I want the old way where the saints went. I want the old way where the saints prayed. It's okay to have prayer time. It's okay to have study time. It's okay to worship God. I believe that worshiping God ought to be a family affair. Why are you trying to go to heaven by yourself? Why you won't tell somebody that God is good? Why you won't strengthen somebody? He says strengthen that which remains. Lord, help me here. If you got a brother or a sister, I need you to strengthen that which remains. Somebody might have gone through some things and made them feel like they want to give up on God. But he said, I charge you to strengthen that which remains. You've got to remind them of when they first believed. That is your job. That is my job. And beloved, that's why we're here. Why would God give a vision of a network of 24-hour ministry if he wasn't trying to get everyone saved? You don't understand that the Lord does not take pleasure in the death of the wicked. He's not happy when people die unsaved. He gets no joy out of that. But he tells us hell has enlarged herself. Why? Because there's some people that just don't want to hear it. Just like in the days of Noah. Why is this man building a boat and it ain't rain? What is rain? Why, why would you do that? But it looked like that ought to strike something in somebody that something is going on. Because people don't normally just do that. You don't hear what I'm saying. When people start going hard for God, it ought to make you stop and think a little bit. Maybe I ain't doing enough. Maybe I ain't praying enough. Maybe I'm not seeking God enough. Maybe it's too much of me in the way. You got to ask yourself, what you doing for God? How you helping the body? You say you're in the body, but are you giving the body a stomachache? Because you're just sitting in one place and you act like you don't want to move. If the blood got to move, you got to move. Come on. If the oxygen got to move, you got to move. Come on. If you're going to be in the body, you're going to have to do something. Lord, I wish you tell your neighbor you got to do something. Yeah, you do. You got to do something. You have to believe the God of the Bible. A lot of people think that the God of the Bible is the God of the past. Let me tell you something. He is who he says he is. And he's a keeper, and he's a deliverer. And I thank God that I'm saved right where I stand. Y'all don't hear what I'm saying. I said I'm saved where I stand. If he came now, it'd be all right. That's the kind of walk you want to have with God. That no matter what, Lord, I've done all i tried to do. If you called me to do it, I've tried to do all you done. There was a song that said, I done done what you told me to do. That's all I can do is what the Lord tells us to do. Listen, the Bible says in 2 Thessalonians chapter number 2 and verse 15, Therefore, brethren, stand fast, come on, and hold the traditions which ye have been taught, whether by the word or by epistle. Listen, a lot of people want to take stuff out the Bible like it don't make no sense. Let me tell you something. 
He said, hold on to those traditions. Well, preacher, what you mean, hold on to the traditions? Bible tells me that when Peter was locked up, that the saints had a prayer meeting. And I want you to know that ain't nothing wrong but gathering together and having a prayer meeting. Lord, have mercy. And we really took the prayer meeting out the church because ain't nobody want to come. But let me tell you something. When the saints get together, God is always present and in the midst. He said two or three, if they, if they touch him in agreement, if they gather together in my name, he said I would be in the midst. And we want to see change, but we don't want to pray. We want to see change, but we don't want to come together. We want to be the ones that say, I made it happen. You got to get rebuked. Because it ain't a me thing, it's a God thing. We can't do it without each other. We can't be the big eye, and, and we, we don't have that in the body of Christ. There are no big eyes in little U's. Just because you got a microphone and the usher's on the door don't mean you bigger or better. No, 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 no. It means that we have understood our assignment. It means that we've understood what we're called for. And I'm telling you, somebody is just called to clap their hands. <laughs> Lord have mercy. They might not be able to sing a lick. That's all right. Clap your hands and give God some praise. Whatever you call to do, you do it with joy. You do it with some honor. I love the ushers. Why? They got to have a strong spirit of discernment. You don't hear what I'm saying. If you got yourself a sanctified usher, you tell that usher, listen, you deserve those spirits when they come in. And if this one looks like they need more of a touch, you put them close. That's the proud looking ones. The ones that think that the service don't go on unless they show up. Come on here. Everybody got them. We done seen them. If this person don't come, God ain't coming. Since when? Since when? God, God ain't like that. He said, I have and am of no respect of persons. Amen. We've got to be willing to hold fast the traditions. We've got to be all night prayer. Ain't nothing wrong with it. Consecration. Nothing wrong with it. Oh, no, that, that, that's the old way. He said, keep them. Hold them. All traditions aren't bad. Now, some of them need to go on out the window. And y'all know the foolish ones. They need to go on out the window and quit why? When I keep those traditions, I identify with the church that has gone before me. You understand what I'm saying? You say you're in the body, but nothing about your life is parallel to what's in that Bible. What am I saying? Well, I believe it was Jesus that went and got baptized. Well, why we got to be baptized? But he did it. So we can't be baptized now. <laughs> Come on, yeah. We keep traditions because we identify with the church that has gone before us. When we get together and we pray and the Holy Ghost come in and give us a Pentecostal experience, we don't want to do that. We don't want to celebrate. I don't understand why y'all celebrate Pentecost. Pen Pentecost. Baby, let me tell you something. If Pentecost hadn't happened, the church wouldn't be who she is. That's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, that's a whole nother, a whole nother session. But we must pray and we must watch that we don't fall into temptation. And we must strengthen those things which remain that are ready to die. If you feel like something is getting ready to die and you feel that it's not working, let me tell you what you need. You need a word. Lord, have mercy, Jesus. You need a word. Why do you need a word? Jesus said, the words that I speak, they are spirit. And they are life. That means if you got something that looks like it's ready to die, you need to be connected to a power source. And let me tell you something. There's no greater power source than the word of God. When the word of God is planted and it takes root, it can reshape, it can connect, it can create what needs to be there. It's time to not only read the word, but it's time to believe the word. Yeah, yeah. It's time that we get back to what the Bible said. A lot of us don't even know what the Bible said because we're too busy looking at the preacher make it up. Lord, have mercy. And we got people say amen and they ain't never read it. Come on. We can't fall for these tricks. We need to know this word of God. What did the psalmist say? David said, I will hide thy word in my heart. Why am I hiding it in my heart? So that I don't sin against God. I'm not leaving it on the preacher. I'm not leaving it on my neighbor. God told me to hide this word in my heart. He gave it to his servant. And so I must have the word in my heart. I must keep the word so I can believe again. 
Amen. Come on, I'm going to that's still going. You've got to believe again. And you've got to hold on. And you've got to make sure. You've got to hold fast to the word of God. You've got to believe it when it don't look believable. You've got to pray again. You've got to pray again. But I don't pray and it don't look like God heard. Keep praying. Keep praying. Because the more you pray, the more you believe. Why are you praying? Because you want God to do it for you. You want God to deliver. You want God. And listen, if you feel like that one prayer you done prayed ain't getting hot enough, touch and agree with somebody. Don't you get with somebody that can help you get a prayer through. Amen? Ain't nothing wrong with getting no help. If you feel like you need some, come on, pray. 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 Why well, do we pray? Because he hears us. Because he hears us. And God loves you more than you realize. He loves you more than you can ever imagine. And he's waiting on you to come and lay your burdens down. Cast your cares. He cares for us. He loves us. He wants us to strengthen our faith, strengthen our hope, strengthen our belief, strengthen our determination, strengthen that which remains. And something got to be remaining because every day we keep getting up. Well, if we getting up, we're getting up for a purpose. And if you get up, get up in God. Come on. If you're going to rise up, rise up in the power of God. Rise up and do something different. How about confusing the enemy for a change? How about even because it feels bad, let me do something different? Hallelujah. Let me get myself dressed. And let me, let me just lift my hands and thank God. I don't care if you ain't went no way but to the living room. Lift your hands and tell God thank you. Why? You gave me another day. You gave me another opportunity. And that's a reason for me to say thank you. That's a reason for me to praise you. Father, if you help me strengthen that which remains, I won't be cut off. But I need you to help me. If my prayer life is lacking, God, I need you to show me what it is that I got to get rid of so I can get there. I have got to get there. You have got to be determined that I'm not going to let nothing stop me from getting what it is that I need from God. I don't want to be the person who says I believe God but really don't believe God. We have too many non-believing believers. You cannot. Either you believe or you don't believe. But we show by the way we act. How we respond. Did you believe God? Did you trust God? Yeah, yeah. yeah. He want he want the person that said, Yeah, I need him. I know without a shadow of a doubt, I can't make it without him. And if he don't do it, it can't be done. Those are the people I'm looking for. Those are the people that, well, that I want to connect with. Why? Because if you know you need it from God, oh, we can get a prayer through them. We, we, we can go. But when you feel like you have other options, well. If God don't do it, I know I, I got a little bit of money in the bank, it'll be all right. That ain't no faith. You still looking at you. You got to get that pride out the way. We have to believe God. We have to trust God. If we have ever received a word from God, we need to let that word do the work. You know, there was a Shunammite woman who received the word from God, and I'm going to get ready to wrap it up here. But she received the word from the prophet, and she wasn't asking for a word. She received one because the prophet appreciated how they served. And the prophet gave the word and said that by this time, and most of you know the story in 2 Kings, um, you're going to have a son. Well, the Shunammite woman had that son. The Bible says that as the young man grew, he was out there with his father working, and all of a sudden he said, my head, my head. Well, now they carried him to his mother, and his mother kept him until he died, right there on her lap. Well, the Bible says that she went and laid him on the bed of the prophet, and she went, and she said, I need to go do something. Y'all don't hear me today. She had to strengthen what remained. And when death is in your faith, what can you, you have to restrain, you have to hold on to the word of God. She was looking at death, but she chose not to accept it. She chose to strengthen what remained. What remained, God said, I was going to have a son. And he didn't say it was going to happen like this death was going to be. I ain't had no time with him. 
So she goes to the prophet, and the prophet is looking at this woman coming afar off. And he says, I don't know what it is. I don't know why it is. Because the Lord has not revealed this to me. And she made it very clear. Listen, I need you to get to my house. I need you to come. He said, I'm going to send my servant. Nah, the servant ain't give me the word. You gave me the word. And the word of God that's in you is the word of God that can resurrect this prophecy. And when the Lord says for us to strengthen that which remains, a lot of us need a resurrecting word to come back to life. Because God has given somebody a word. And he's saying, don't let the word die. But I want you to strengthen that which remains. And even though it looks like it's about to collapse, it, it looks like it will not be sustained. He said, I want you to strengthen that which remains. And so as the woman was back on her way with Elijah, Elijah comes in the room and he's looking at the dead child. And the Bible says that he lays on the child. You know the story. And nothing happens. He said, wait a minute now, God. It ain't me trying to test this out. This is a you thing. And a lot of us have got to take the power out of our hands and give it back to God. Because God allows us to do some things. We think, oh, I just can do it all. I can do it all. No, you can't do nothing without God. And when we yield to his will, it is even something that God is trying to show us. Because God did not tell the prophet what was wrong. He had to wait and see. And there are some things that you're going to just have to wait and see. Lord, have mercy. He done gave you a word, and it looked like it's coming to pass, and it looked like it's working, but now it looked like it's dying. You've got to resurrect the prophecy. Why do I resurrect the prophecy? Because it's the word of God, and the word of God has to live. The word of God has to be sustained. The word of God is life. And so as the man prayed and he laid on, on the child again, the Bible said that the young man, he, he got up and, and, and look, the Lord resurrected him. There was faith involved. There was obedience involved. There was time involved. Listen here now. Things don't happen just overnight. And when God gives us a word and we don't see it right then and there, then we say, oh, well, that person lied. Or you say, oh, that wasn't from God. Wait a minute now. What is God trying to show you? What is God trying to teach you? Yes, he is a, 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 an honorable man. He's, he's God. He ain't going to lie to you. But when you think that you've got God figured out, that's when it's time to repeat that course. Because you have no idea. He said, your thoughts and my thoughts are as far apart as the heaven is from the earth. You have no idea. Have you ever been on an airplane? And you realize how high you are. You have no idea the heavens above you. And he says, our thoughts are just that separate. You don't know how God want to teach you. You don't know how God want to strengthen you. You don't see the kingdom connections that God is laying at your feet. Well, God, I don't have no use of that. Well, God, I don't have no use. You don't know what you need yet. But you've got to trust God and strengthen the peace that you do have. So that way they all can work together. Amen. We need each other, beloved. We need each other. We need each other's prayers. We need each other's support. We need each other. I get strength when I listen to winning in prayer. I can turn it on anytime. Somebody going to be praying. Somebody going to be teaching. Somebody going to exhort. Somebody going to share. I enjoy it. Why? Because the prince of the power of this air is consuming these people and it is a spirit of disobedience. You hear what I say? We have an option now to hear the word of God. We are without an excuse. You don't have to sit up and listen to everybody cussing and carrying on like they ain't got good sense. You ain't got to sit up there and watch people take off their clothes. You ain't got to do that. You can get in the presence of the Lord. You can hear the word of God. You can stream the word of God. Come on. God has made it available and accessible. Why is God doing it? He's coming soon. 
And people will be without an excuse. They won't be able to say, God, I, I, I didn't hear. If you didn't hear, it's because you didn't want to hear. You've got to want to hear from God. You've got to want to be in relationship with God. And he tells us, I need you to strengthen that which remains. Because what you have is getting ready to die. And I want us to remember that God has called us for a purpose. I want us to remember that God has anointed us for a reason. I want us to remember that all giftings and callings come from God. Hallelujah. And it is his job to help us. And it is our job to submit and hear what it is that the Father has to say. I hope you are encouraged and I hope you will continue to pray. I'm going to pray for us because we want God to strengthen that which remains in us. We want God to make us whole. We want God to be able to use us for his glory. We want God to strengthen that which remains. If our spirit feels low, Father, strengthen that which remains. If we only have one word from God, and we only have one promise left, I need us to hold on with everything we got in us and strengthen that which remains. Come on, let us pray, shall we? Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you. Father, we give you glory and we give you honor and we give you praise. Father, this is the day that you have made and we shall rejoice and be glad in it. Father, we thank you. Father, we thank you because you've allowed us one more opportunity to come into your presence to make our request known. And Father, our request is that you strengthen us those things that remain. Father, the faith that we had in you. Father, we need you to strengthen it now. Father, you said in your word that faith coming by hearing and hearing by the word of God. We have heard your word. Father, we have heard your word. And Father, we ask you to strengthen us right now. Somebody has gone astray. Somebody has forgotten that you are God. But Father, right now, we ask you to redirect the mind. Father, let everyone turn back to their first love. Father, your word declares that you are married to the backslider. So, Father, we thank you right now for reconnection. Father, we thank you right now for redirection. Father, we ask you to strengthen our hope in you. Father, we ask you to strengthen our word. Father, we ask that you will renew the mind right now in the name of Jesus. Father, let this mind be in us, which is also in you, Lord. Father, we ask you to do it now. Father, give us a mind to go on. Father, give us a mind to serve you. Father, give us a mind to worship you. Father, give us a mind to take time out our day and to lift up our hands and to say thank you. Father, we thank you for what you've done already. Father, we thank you for the ways that you've already made. Father, we thank you for the water that you provided in our desert times. Father, we thank you how you've given us grace and mercy. Father, we thank you for the things that you didn't allow to happen. Father, we thank you and we give you praise. Now, kind Father, we ask that you would strengthen those things that remain. Father, if we have unbelief, we say help our unbelief. Father, we ask you to give us what it is that we need that will please you in this last day hour. Father, give us a mind to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things will be added unto us. Father, give us a mind to understand that if you are first, everything else will fall in line. Father, help us to redirect our feelings. Father, help us to redirect our emotions. Father, help us to eliminate those distractions, my God. Father, help us to continue on in the faith. Lord, help us to be strengthened in the faith. Father, give us the power to contend for the faith. Father, give us strength now in Jesus' name. Father, as we depart from this place and at your presence, Father, we say stay with us. Father, we say breathe on us. Father, we say rest on us. Father, let your spirit encamp around us. Father, let us feel your presence as you go to and fro. Father, we invite you in. We invite you in. Invite you into the situation. Invite you into the heartache. We invite you into the headache. Father, get in with us and strengthen us so that when we come out, we are made whole. In the mighty and matchless name of Jesus, we pray. 
Well, beloved, I pray that you are encouraged. I do pray that you have received something. I know that there are many voices in the earth. And I just pray that God will give us an ear to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. The church is getting strength. And the church is growing. I said the church is growing. The church is growing. Look at our network here. Look at, me. Look at God. The church is growing. I believe it was Peter said, and he added to the church daily. Look at God adding to the church. People can just turn on a television or a device, and they can hear the word of God. And they can repent of their sins. Saints, let me tell you, repentance is required. I said repentance is required. You can't say I'm sorry and don't change your ways. You can't say I'm sorry and have dirty hands. But you've got to be changed and transformed. Hallelujah. And so, beloved, I pray that God go with you throughout your day. I pray that you feel the love of God. And I pray that you feel the grace of God. And I want you to continue winning in prayer. Continue winning in the word, and continue to keep God first in your life. Let God strengthen that which remains. God bless you. I love you with the love of the Lord, and I pray you are encouraged. Until next time, keep winning in prayer. God bless you. to grow your ministry join winning in prayer tv christian broadcasting on roku your ministry will be shared on social media platforms streamed on roku with the reach of 55 million homes it will be your choice of day and time professional editing and a low weekly cost of 25 dollars a week contact us today at 941-782-8322 or you can email at winning in prayer TV at gmail.com. Again, contact us at 941-782-8322. Winning in prayer TV at gmail.com to get more information. Thank you and hope to hear from you.